Okay guys, there's my little garage. I have not been in here since just after Christmas. It is April the 4th. First I'm going to go out to the back lane and show you how the ice melted, which I'm really happy about. Last night I put the recycle bin out. So here's, this is pretty typical April, but I'm thrilled. My apron from here to here is not covered with snow. If we had come home two weeks ago, it would have been. So that was the recycle bin I put out last night at midnight. Now I'm just going to show you something before I go in. Do you see right there, there are scratches right there. That's because people have tried to break in. I'll show that in a bit. Okay everybody, we're going to go into the garage for the first time in uh, three months, a quarter of a year. Let's get some lights on. Mrs. P's car, Frank, at first glance things look good. Alright, so now these fluorescents take a while to warm up, huh? So, uh, let's see, I kinda, I don't know where to start. We'll turn some lights on. Uh, I know. We'll turn that one on, that one on, and then this one on just for some secondary lighting until we get rolling. Uh, there we go. Is that gonna help? Yes, I think it is. So, let's go this way, a little more light. I put some rags down just where there's a tiny gap in the bottom of the door so the snow wouldn't blow underneath. And then up here, I showed you guys where the scratches were on the door. I put this piece of wood across here to keep people from sticking a coat hanger through there and uh, pulling this red rope and then they can break into the back, the garage from the back. So let's just pull this down. This piece of rope here or a piece of, piece of old towel, and this piece of towel, oh, and another one. Okay, because you can see now there's a little daylight coming in underneath there. A mouse could run through there at full speed. So now, this one blew in, look at that, just from the wind. And I have to show you, over here, this door's bolted in, if you look really close, that bolt there just goes through the channel and it prevents the roller. The roller hits there if somebody's trying to break in, right? And there's one on the other door as well. So I am going to go get those, take those bolts out, they're half inch, and then we'll see if we can open the doors. You see up there, there's another piece of wood. That's a taller garage door, see that? It's one panel taller. And that little piece of wood stops the guys from breaking in too. So I'm just going to take the bolts out of the channels and then we'll come back and open the doors. Alright, so now the doors are uh, ready to be opened except there's still no electricity to them, right? So if we look back behind this toolbox, the door breaker is turned off. That's the only one. Click. Did you hear that? Lights should be on. Yes, they are. And uh, right now it is 6 degrees inside and 12 degrees outside. So it's colder in the garage than it is outside because this garage is so well insulated. So let's get some heat in here. You ready? One, two, three. Okay, that's a big step. Next, you're gonna laugh now, Hank. Henry, that's my stuff, my precious stuff. I never left anything on the wall that you could cut a chain with, right? So over here, my, my homemade jack press, bench grinders, anvil and toolbox were chained up to an anchor back there. That's in the concrete, by the way, down there. 
you don't have to see it, but it's in the concrete and welded so it can't be twisted out. Yes, there's stuff in here people can still steal, but the good stuff's all chained up. And my angle grinders are also gone so they can't use that to cut the chains. I know it's a little bit paranoid, but it's taken me a lifetime to acquire this stuff. And uh, I don't want to do that again. So now I guess the next thing is, let's see what's, what's next. Get some of this stuff back where it belongs. So let me get you on the tripod and we'll continue. All right, Hank. This takes a few padlocks and a few chains, but I'm going to pair, put a pair of gloves on for this. And I'm going to use knee pads when I need them. I've joined the seniors club, so I'm going to start behaving like one. Not like a crazy person. Okay, so that's the single master key right here. I, I never remember it. Imagine that, eh? Okay, one lock. Every time a chain goes through something instead of over it, it uh, stops. See, it's through the handles of the welders in the boxes. Down over here now. <coughs> There, that's where I need knee protection. <clears throat> Bar here. I'm going to undo this chain from the other side. Oh. Pardon me, I'm in the way, but that's okay. <laughs> Hank knows the more you are, the harder this is to do. slash mink welder that I use as a flux core. You can see there's no cover on that. Alright. So the next most important thing is to go over here and get the grinders out of here. i got to unlock that toolbox. How many of you guys are laughing right now? None. I hope because you guys know how hard this is. Okay, this is the old, old box. Where you don't want to break the key off in the, in the lock, eh? <laughs> okay, let's see. Grinders. One, two, three, four, and one I locked away. So now, let's just, don't look, don't, don't get dizzy. That'll work. <clears throat> nope, that one goes there. The cup brush goes back there. The flat disc goes here. Cutter mostly used goes there. No, that's I mean you can put any one of those grinders in any one of those discs, but that's how I set it up. And then this was the one that I purposely hid away. There, hacksaw. The tool you never want to use. But you use all the time. What else we got in there that I need to uh, free? Oh yeah, there's more. We'll do some more chains before we do tools. This is my road box in case I did a, a, a field call. Yes, I still do field calls. Dog. 
that is the key. There it is. And the other one is over here. I should be using an e I don't know if you guys know it, but that that anvil is not a cheap item. None of this stuff is cheap. It might be a set of Pittsburgh wrenches or something, but the totality is not. Okay, so now This toolbox with a very, very important gasket for my 50-year-old chainsaw is just going to go back up here. All I've lifted in the last three months is a beer can. Okay, we're getting there. And then I'll just take you down there, you don't have to see. But that toolbox down over here is also locked just to keep things inconvenient to the wall right there. I'll, and I'll turn you off and come back in a bit. Because he has to be freed because the chains go into him. One more, the valuable stuff. Miter box, uh, electric miter saw, power washer, chain through, all the way across the floor to my compressor, all locked up. So let me just get these chains off and I'll come back. You're getting the idea now. Oh, there's two different chains, one for there and one for there. Perfect. Okay, Hank, you'd appreciate this. You might remember the video where I put this guy on wheels? This is one heavy thing. And I thought I was going to have to use my Tiger torch to get the ice off the apron in the garage, but it, as I said, you know, it, it was, uh, it melted itself off. So isn't that cool? So now the chains, they're going home. And now, one more thing to do when we get back, and that's to start the vehicles, because they've had the batteries disconnected for three months. All right, let's do this toolbox. It's got the good stuff in it. And let's do this one. What key would that be? That's a fancy new one. I replaced this lock. I think it's this one right here. There we are. So as you guys know, this is the good stuff, right? <coughs> Empty drawer. And that's something. Knives. Oh yeah. It's all coming back to me. It's good that I'm having a look actually. Torx. And another empty drawer. Can you believe that? So that's great. I think I've got unlocked everything I can unlock. Yes, I talked about that two-stroke strimmer uh, when I was down south, Mexico. And over here are the parts for the uh, 100cc 
chainsaw. And down here I think should be relatively sane. Yeah. Okay, I'm just having a look around, eh? Baby drill press. We're looking good here. So now the most important part. Getting the vehicles running. Let's pull the hood. Yes, ten and a half years old. It's not hard if you do it all the time. So here's what's happening here, guys. Is this cable has to be connected up to the battery right there. And we'll just go get some tools and we'll do that. Looks like a 10 mil, doesn't it? Oh no, 13 mil right there. And we'll get a voltmeter just to see what that battery's running at. And I'll go get some keys. I'll be right back. All right. First, we're going to just check the voltage on the battery, right? DC volts. It should be above 12. But it's been sitting for three months, so remember that, right? Oh, that's positive. There, I disconnected the negative. That's good. Screwdriver. Or pry bar. There we go. Okay, let's hope this is somewhere 11.5 to 12.5. 12.17. I don't even think I need to put a battery charger on that. And it was a 12 millimeter, not a 13. I'm just going to start the car. I was going to put a charger on it, but you know the alternator is such a good... It's designed for the machine, right? Now, the only light on... There should be no lights on. It might arc a little bit. It might arc a little bit because there's a lot of... There's a lot of stuff going on when you first connect up a battery, right? And this car is old enough that it doesn't lose its computer when it's disconnected. We hope. I've done this many times. That's all it is. We'll just tighten that nut up. And it really is nice. You don't have to muck with the battery with the battery terminal, eh? It's a good design. Thank you, Kia. I know some of you guys out there don't like them, but let's get the real test. I'm just gonna give that uh, 10 millimeter a nudge for the battery post, just because I'm here. They're actually torqued, eh? Now, well, let's just see if it goes. Keys. Now i got to set all the radio stations. Let's see how many turns it takes. That was no rehearsal. Now let's see what it's charging at. You can hear the alternator kind of whining. That's it's charging at 13 something. Fourteen three. It just doesn't get any better than that. Now I didn't check the oil, but there's no oil dripped out. So. Oh yeah, that's oil warm up. Now let's go do number two. The big boy. Frank! And I think I can use my extension. I'm going to start using my tripod more, guys. You're still watching. That's the key. Yep. Let's 
same procedure. It's a GM battery and the negative is disconnected. And this is this should still be a good battery too. So we're going to go to DC jolts on the Maita. And you guys, yeah, you guys can just see that, eh? So black and to the battery and to the red. 12.34, so it's actually a little better than the car. Good. Now I need a 516 ratchet wrench. This is going to arc a little bit because the light is going to come on up there. Let's lift your chin up a little bit. And we'll turn you a little bit this way. And I'm going to connect the battery down over in this corner. Oh, there we go. And they've all got a little bit of uh, anti-corrosion grease on them. I, that's a, that goes without saying for me. Now, Frank used a little bit of oil the last time I... Well, there isn't even a drip underneath them yet. And he used a little bit of oil, so I'm going to check that before I fire him up and see if it's a figment of my imagination. Well, it used a quarter of a quart in 4,000 4, miles. Okay, are we ready? Let's fire Frank up. Are we there? Yes, we are. And I think that's just about all I got to do to get this garage from wintered to summered. Thanks for watching this with me, my friends.